We are starting with sequential circuits today. What are a sequential circuit? Keeping in mind that we have already learned about a combinational circuit, we are henceforth moving ahead to sequential circuits. A sequential circuit is a special type of circuit that has a series of inputs and outputs. The output of a sequential circuit would depend on both the combination of the present input and the previous outputs. So, if I want to say, I could put it in the other words, the previous output is also treated as a present state. So, simplifying this, a sequential circuit is actually represented as a combinational circuit with a memory storage. And that is the basic difference between a sequential circuit and a combinational circuit. A sequential circuit has a memory being used. A combinational circuit just takes care of the inputs and gives us the output with no memory storage being taken into consideration. First and foremost, let us compare the two kinds of circuits and see how the each is different from the other. So, the combinational circuits, the output of the combinational circuit will depend only on the present input, which is just what I said. Whereas, in case of a sequential circuit, the output of the sequential circuits depends both on the present input and the present state which is called as the previous output. So, the previous output is actually stored, taken in again as another input. In case of combinational circuits, the feedback path is not present in the combinational circuit because we do not take the, we take only the inputs from the current state here. In case of the sequential circuit, the feedback path is present in the sequential circuit because we have to take the previous output also as an input in this case. The third difference in the combinational circuits, the memory elements are not required because it is not taken into consideration the previous output. So, no memory is required. In the sequential circuit, that is one big difference that we do have the memory elements because we have to consider the previous output also. So, in the sequential circuit, the memory elements play an important role and are required. Difference number 4, the clock signal is not required for combinational circuits. In case of sequential circuits, the clock signal is required for each one of them. The last difference in case of combinational circuits, it is very simple to design. Keeping in mind, it just has to take care of the inputs that we are taking and the output that we are going to get. Nothing else is required here. In case of sequential circuit, we already know that we have to take in the current inputs, the output of the previous as an again another input. So, we need to have memory also. So, automatically all this is implemented through a circuit design which may not be very simple to design. So, it is not simple to design a sequential circuit. These are the five major differences that you see between a combinational circuit and a sequential circuit. The most common form of any <coughs> sequential circuit that is used are known as flip-flops. Today the focus is going to be on the flip-flops, how they function and the different kinds of flip-flops. So, let us first understand what a flip-flop is. It is obviously a sequential circuit because that is what the focus is today. A circuit that has two stable states is treated as a flip-flop. These stable states are used to store the binary data that can be changed by applying the varying inputs. The first and the foremost thing that we all need to keep in mind, since it is a sequential circuit, it will have some memory because it is going to store the values. Also, it will have some input being taken from the output of the previous state. So, we do not need to repeat this again. We just said it is going to use to it is going to store some binary data so that it can be used as an input. Flip flops and latches. Latch is yet another example for a data storage element. These are very close to each other, but there is a difference in their working style. The focus today is only flip flops. So, it is a binary cell which is capable of storing one bit of information. It has two outputs, one for the normal value and one for the complement value of the bit that is stored in it. So, it has some storage in it and is going to also store the complement of the value. Let us look at a clocked sequential circuit. 
a flip flop maintains a binary state until it is directed by a clock pulse to switch the state. That is why this is called as a clocked sequential circuit or a flip flop. What is the purpose of a clock pulse? We will see it in the description when we follow each or understand the different kinds of flip flops that we are going to learn about today. The difference among various types of flip flops is in the number of inputs they possess and in the manner in which the inputs will affect the binary state. So our focus area is going to be six types of flip flops today. SR, D, JK, T, master slave and edge triggered. Each one of them as we clearly read here is different with depending on the number of inputs that each one of them is taking and how it affects the binary state of the inputs that each one has already saved. Let us start from the very first one which is the SR flip flop. What is an SR? It is a short form for set reset flip flop. It will have three inputs which are labeled as S for set. R for reset and C for the clock. Please remember we just did the word clock triggered or clocked sequential circuit. So, there has to be a clock pulse there. So, clock pulse is going to be shown by a C on the diagram. It has an output Q and sometimes the flip fall has a complemented output which could be also called as a Q dash which is indicated with a small circle at the output terminal. This is how we will represent it di diagrammatically. Let us look at the diagram first to be able to understand what I was trying to explain. So, the very first symbol that shows S is your set input, R is your reset input, C with that triangle small triangle is a clock, Q is the output, Q dash is the inverted output which is also shown with that small little circle in front of it. This is what I was just trying to mention you here. What does and how does it work? There is an arrowhead shaped symbol in front of the letter C to designate a dynamic input which is what I just showed you on this diagram here. The triangular thing is showing that C is a clock and it is going to be dynamic. What does a dynamic mean here? The dynamic indicator symbol denotes the fact that the flip flop responds to a positive transition from a 0 to 1 on the input clock signal and this is how the C will function in each one of your flip flops. Let us come to the characteristic table of how a SR flip flop works. Since you had two inputs S and R, we have four possible combinations of the values that S and R can take in the table. Q T plus 1 is the operation. Let us go each row by row and discuss the functioning here. There are let us go to the row number 2 when S has a value 0, R has a value 1. The output that we get is 0 which actually resets your flip flop. Go to row number 3, S equal to 1, R equal to 0. So, the output Q T plus 1 is 1 which is when your flip flop is actually set. Come back to row number 1 where both the inputs are zeros. So, there is going to be no change here. The last one both are ones. the output has a question mark there because this is a state the output of which is undefined. Let us take this if there is no signal at the clock input C the output of the circuit cannot change irrespective of the values at the input S and R because we said that the clock has a part to play here. Only when the clock signal changes from 0 to 1 can the output be affected according to the values in the inputs S and R. We were just reading this in the table. Q T is the binary state of the Q output at a given time which is the present state whereas Q T plus 1 is the binary state of the Q output after the occurrence of a clock transition. So, we call that as a next state. These are the terms that we are going to use throughout the description of a flip flop. Present state and a next state. So, it is represented by a QT or a QT plus 1 in terms of time. Going back to the table you can now relate to it QT plus 1 is the next state and QT if you see in the row number 1 is the present state of the flip flop. Coming to what we discussed if S equal to 1 and R is equal to 0 when the C changes from 0 to 1 the output Q is set to 1 which is the state 
where you see the third row it is set. If S is 0, R is 1, when the C changes from 0 to 1, output Q is cleared to 0 which was the state of reset. If both S and R are 0, during the clock transition the output does not change which is what we saw in the row number 1 that QT remains as it is, there is going to be no change in the output. The last one is a very typical one for SR that when both S and R equal to 1, the output is unpredictable and it may go through either 0 or 1 depending on the internal timing delays that occur within the circuit. So, we do not know when it is going to change and what it depends on. So, we call it as an unpredictable state. Let us get back to the diagram. Keeping in mind this characteristic table that we have for SR flip-flop, we have been able to design the circuit for an SR. We just call it as SR, do not call it as set reset, but that is what the function is. So, if you look at this diagram, one of the outputs is Q in the first one and with Y you have another output Q again because we are using two AND gates here for one for set, the other one for reset. The output for the first one if you see is also the input of the other one and vice versa. That is a typical of a sequential circuit. The most important uh, thing that we need to keep in mind for the SR flip-flop is that it should not be pulsed when S or R is equal to 1 which is the last row since it produces an indeterminate next state. We cannot predict what it is going to be. So, this indeterminate condition makes the SR flip-flop a little difficult to manage and therefore, this flip-flop is seldom used in a regular practice. But we need to learn about this because it, this forms the basis of our first exposure to any flip-flop, first exposure to how a flip-flop functions and what all are the things that we need to keep in mind with the other flip-flops. Let us move to the next one which is called as a D flip-flop. Now, this D flip-flop is actually made from the SR flip-flop. The problem with SR was, was the last one which was the state when it is indeterminate output. So, we try and reduce that or we try and do away with that in this D flip-flop. The D flip-flop is mostly used in the shift registers, in counters and input synchronization. An SR flip-flop is converted to a D flip-flop by inserting an inverter between S and R and assigning the symbol D to the single input. Look at this diagram here, it makes it very clear for us to understand. The input is D and a clock has been added here output would be Q and an inverted output of Q dash. The D input is sampled during the occurrence of a clock transition from 0 to 1. If D is equal to 1, the output of the flip-flop will go to 1. But if D is equal to 0, the output of the flip-flop also goes to a 0 state, which is very clearly obvious to us in this table that we have, whereas input is D and the output is Q. When 0 input, 0 output. When 1 input, one output. That is so typical of a D flip-flop. This is what we have just understood from here. Again, look at the circuit diagram. This output has been brought possible or has been made possible after we have, if you look at the right hand side, that is the SR flip-flop diagram and we have just added an inverter and a clock in front of it to make it as a D flip-flop to achieve what we could not achieve through the SR flip-flop. So, from the characteristic table, we note that the state QT plus 1 is determined from the D input. The relationship can be expressed in the terms of QT plus 1 is equal to D, which is what I was reading in the table that when D is 0, the QT plus 1 state is also 0, which is the output is also 0. So, that is why we have been able to represent that both QT plus 1 and D are equal to each other. This means that the Q output of the flip-flop receive its value from D input every time that the clock signal goes through a transition from a 0 to a 1. The D flip-flop has an advantage of having only one input because we are not including the C here. It has the disadvantage that it is a characteristic table does not have a no change condition wherein a QT plus 1 is equal to QT. So, we have been able to reduce or remove the disadvantage of a SR flip-flop whereas a D flip-flop 
also has its own disadvantage here. The no change condition can be accomplished how? Because that is a disadvantage with this. So, we can do some change here which is either we disable the clock signal, it makes no change or by feeding the output back into the input so that the clock pulse keeps the state of the flip-flop unchanged. These are the two possible methods of removing away the disadvantage of a no change in case of a D flip-flop. So, let us move on to the next one which is a JK flip-flop. Now, JK flip-flop is go yet going to be another refinement of the SR flip-flop. So, that is the reason why I told you initially that we need to understand an SR flip-flop because that makes the basis of a number of the flip-flops further ahead. A J flip-flop is a refinement of the SR flip-flop in which the indeterminate condition of the SR type is defined in the JK type, which means we have not removed it, but we have been able to give it a definite output here. The J input is equivalent to the S or the set in case of the SR and the K input is equivalent to the R of the or the reset of the SR flip-flop. Inputs J and K behave like the inputs S and R to set and clear the flip-flops respectively. So, you can imagine JK to be quite close or identical to the SR with the indeterminate state having been taken care of. When the inputs J and K both are equal to 1, a clock transition switches their outputs to the flip-flop to their complement state. Look at this diagram, the circuit diagram, the first one, the block diagram. J and K both are acting as the inputs like S and R. We had a clock there which was a dynamic one. We have a clock here as well. We had two outputs, a Q and a Q dash. We have two outputs Q and Q dash here also in case of J, K. So, as far as the block time or the symbol goes, it is almost the same as the S R. But if you look at the truth table, the first three rows are almost are the same as we had in the S R. However, the last row we had an indeterminate output in case of SR whereas here we have a clear output which is a Q dash or a Q0 dash because we have removed the indeterminacy from the SR and have a fixed output in case of a JK. Look at the diagram or the circuit diagram of this. You have a basic SR which is in the colored shade and you have both the AND gates in front of it to convert it into the reverse of the input or we as we call it as a toggled input. So, we see that instead of the indeterminate condition in the JK flop flip flop, it has a complement condition where Q T plus 1 is equal to Q dash T when both J and K are equal to 1 which is the last row in this table and that is the reason we see an output is there in this truth table as compared to the truth table of the SR flip-flop. Coming to the yet another one which is called as a toggle or the T flip-flop. This is the fourth in our line that we were discussing. This is obtained now from the JK type. First was SR, we did try to remove away the problem from SR into and get a better hold on the JK. Now, in the JK type, we make a small change and we call it as a T flip-flop. In this case, the inputs J and K are connected to provide a single input which is designated by T or a toggle. The T flip-flop will have only two conditions. We know how the word toggle means that when T is a 0 or a T is a 1. So similarly, this toggle flip-flop also has the same function very first condition for a toggle flip-flop when T is equal to 0 which means both J and K are 0, a clock transition does not change the state of the flip-flop. The other condition could be when T is equal to 1 which means both J and K are equal to 1, a clock transition will complement the state of the flip-flop which is what exactly a toggle does. Look at the functioning, these conditions can be expressed by a characteristic equation which is a QT plus 1 is equal to QT with an XOR of its toggle. The circuit diagram similar to that of JK but has only one input T and you see both the Q and Q dash. Look at the table again. 
you have T and Y as the inputs or Y T plus 1 or you can also call it as Q T plus 1 as your output and the circuit diagram is being represented with a toggle which just converts a 0 to a 1 or a 1 to a 0. That is how a toggle flip flop functions. Coming to yet another category, this flip flop is called as a master slave flip flop. The name itself suggests the function that out of the flip flop there has to be at least there have to be a combination of two flip flops, one which acts as a master, the other which acts as a slave. So, which are the flip flops you are going to use here? You are going to use two JK flip flops. Now, why JK? If you look at the previous flip flops that we have learned, JK was probably the one in which we did not, we had the advantages of both the SR and the disadvantage of SR was removed away. So, we are very comfortable using a JK and combination of two JK flip flops makes a master slave flip flop. These flip flops are connected in series. The first flip flop works as a master and the second JK works as a slave. Going by the name, master will give instructions to the slave and vice versa. The master responds to the positive level of the clock and the slave will respond to the negative level of the clock. The result is that the output changes during the 1 to a 0 transition of the clock signal because in one time master is going to respond, the other level the clock is other slave is going to respond. The output of the master flip flop is passed to both the inputs of the slave flip flop. Please remember that was how we started discussion of the sequential circuits that the output of one can be taken as the input to the other and that is the reason why we needed to save that and have a memory in the circuit. So, it is obvious from here output of the master flip flop is passed to the input as the slave flip flop and the output of the slave flip flop is passed as an input to the master flip flop. The master slave flip flop apart from these two flip flops we also have an inverter on a NOT gate which is used for passing the inverted clock pulse to the slave because if the both inputs are going to be the same we cannot have different outputs. So, one will take the regular the other one will take an inverted clock pulse which is usually going to go to the slave. When clock pulse is set to false for the master, the CP that here I have written here stands for clock pulse is set to true for the slave. So, please remember they are going to be reversed to each other. So, clock pulse for false for master it will be set as true for slave. When it is clock pulse is set to true for master, the clock it is going to be set false for the slave. That is how the reverse inputs are going to go into each other. Look at this circuit diagram. The first one is actually a both of them are representation of the JK flip flops, two different JK flip flops, one acting as a master, the other acting as a slave and you see an inverter at the bottom because the inverted input has to go into the other one. So, one goes into 0, the 0 goes into 1 and we have a clock to control it because with every clock pulse that it changes, a 0 is converted to a 1 or vice versa and that is very obvious from the diagram on the right hand side that we see which is for how the clock pulses are controlled. The last one is an edge triggered. All this while that we were discussing, we saw the flip flops being controlled by almost just their functioning itself whereas this typical one is used to synchronize the state change during a call clock pulse transition and that is why it is called as the edge triggered flip flop. The output transitions occur at a specific level to the clock pulse. How does it go about? Let us look at this. When the pulse input level exceeds this threshold level, the inputs are locked out so that the flip flop is unresponsive to the further changes in inputs until the clock pulse returns to 0 and another pulse occurs that is what an edge triggered means. And how does it vary? Some edge triggered flip flops will cause a transition on the rising edge of the clock pulse which is also called as the positive edge transition and the others will cause a transition on the falling edge which is called as a negative edge transition. So, this is how we control the clock pulse of a positive edge or a negative edge. Thank you.